Hi kids, and welcome to Disney Animation Reviews. I'm Josiah Milky. And I'm Jordan Milky. And, as you can probably tell from our clothes and the toys on the shelf behind us here, today's topic is Disney's 42nd animated feature film, one of my favorites, Lilo and Stitch. Uh, but first, a little history, as usual. So, the last animated Disney feature was Atlantis, and if you saw my review of that one, you know how that one turned out. Uh-huh. After Atlantis, uh, Disney had a couple of live-action films, like The Princess Diaries. With Anne Hathaway and Mary Poppins' Julie Andrews. Mm-hmm. Um, Disney Channel had their first original animated TV series, The Proud Family. And for fall of 2001, Disney and Pixar had their fourth feature film, Monsters Incorporated. It was the first Pixar movie to be directed by somebody other than John Lasseter, because it was directed by Pete Docter. It won Randy Newman his first ever Academy Award for Best Original Son for If I Didn't Have You, which is the song that Mike and Sully sang over the end credits. And it was one of the first feature films to be nominated for Best Animated Feature at the Academy Awards. It didn't win. DreamWorks Shrek took home the first Best Animated Feature Oscar. But two years later, Finding Nemo did win for Pixar. In 2002... Disney started things off with something for the kids with the theatrical Disney Toon film, Peter Pan in Return to Neverland. Mixed reviews, but it did decently well at the box office. Yeah, it's actually one of my favorites. It's okay, I guess. Um, let's see, what else? And then in the summer of 2002, Disney kicked off the summer really well with two big things in animation. First, there was the Emmy-nominated original Disney Channel animated TV series, Kim Possible. Call me, beat me, if you want to reach me. Kim Possible, uh, we've actually rewatched it, uh, gone back to rewatching it in the last couple years. It's an old favorite that we now really enjoy. It had four seasons, uh, two movies, um, our favorite being uh, Kim Possible movie, Sell the Drama. And it's going to get a live-action movie remake. Um, sometime next year on Disney Channel. So, Kim Possible was Disney's first early summer success for 2002. The other one was the topic of today's review, Disney's 42nd animated feature, Lilo and Stitch. Released to theaters in the summer of 2002, two weeks after Kim Possible got started, Lilo and Stitch didn't reinvent any wheels at Disney Animation, but given the declining box office returns of their last couple animated features, Lilo and Stitch did very well, bringing in about $145 million in America and about $273 million worldwide, getting really good reviews, and it was the first Walt Disney Animation Studios feature film nominated for Best Animated Feature Academy Award, but losing the Studio Ghibli's spared it away. Oh, that's too bad. But it's one of my favorites, actually, because not only is it something completely different, because it takes place in Hawaii, and your main characters are a little girl and an alien experiment, but it also, along with being silly, also, but also illustrates some really dark moments, showing the seriousness of bad times that can happen in your life, and the importance of devotion to your family. Mm-hmm. So let's talk Lilo and Stitch. The movie starts with one of the longest prologues before the opening credits come up. I think it's like 10 minutes. Yep, really long, actually. About 10 minutes exactly. Uh, Stitch uh, is introduced to us as Experiment 626. He was actually created for a children's book pitch that never got off the ground in the mid-80s. Uh, Chris Sanders came up with the character. Um, it never worked as a children's book pitch, but ultimately... In the late 90s, they decided to have the Stitch idea as a small-budget animated feature in the midst of more expensive films like Atlantis, similar to what Walt Disney himself did with Dumbo, which was less expensive compared to other early animated features like Pinocchio and Bambi. Hmm. So at the start of the film, we're introduced to Stitch, who at the beginning is called Experiment 626. Uh, he is the result of a creation by alien scientist Jumba Jukiba, who created Stitch to wreak havoc. Um, Stitch is sent to exile on a desert asteroid, and Jumba is arrested, but Stitch escapes and hotwires a red spaceship police cruiser to Earth, where he lands on the island of Kauai, Hawaii. And 
And it's there that we get to meet our other main protagonist, a little five-year-old girl named Lilo. Lilo has recently lost her parents in a car crash mm. and is living with her older sister, Nani. Now, Nani is a combination of sweet and tough. Right, because uh, she loves her little sister, but wants to make sure she's happy, and wants to make sure she's happy, but is also trying her best to parent her following the loss of their parents. Lilo, as you'll see throughout the film if you've watched it, is not your typical girly girl. She's not like Disney princesses who want true love or to be noticed or anything like that. Uh, she's got, she's very unique for her age and has some odd yet unique personality traits. She takes photos of fat tourists at the beach. Ah! She feeds pe peanut butter sandwiches to fish in the ocean. She loves Elvis. Yep. She takes hula dance classes and even practices voodoo. A foreshadowing element from The Princess and the Frog. Yeah, because of this, it's hard for her to make friends. But she has one friend, a homemade doll named Scrump. Yep, I never thought about this until my friend Rachel Wagner pointed it out in her review, but the fact that Lilo makes her own doll with Scrump, it kind of makes her like the good guy version of Sid from the original Toy yeah, Story. because it had all those mutant toys with him. Lilo and Nani, it's shown they love each other very much, but they do present the problems they have getting along with each other, which becomes even more of a problem when they get word that if Nani can't take care of, can't take adequate care of Lilo, Lilo will have to go live with a foster family, courtesy of Cobra Bobbles, a social worker who, laughingly enough, looks nothing like a social worker. I am the one they call when things go wrong. Nice, but I, I think I do it better. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, Lilo and Nani, I can totally relate to these two sisters, because I have you, and I have our little sister, Joy. Um, you and I, we get along pretty well, It's um, um, but Joy's a bit of a pain. Although, the relationship between Lilo and Nani actually painfully reminds me m more of the relationship with my dad. And the problems and the fights we get into, like the sisters do. Uh huh. But we always try to make up, just like Lilo and Nani do. When Lilo tells Nani uh, that she doesn't have any friends and she wishes on a, what she thinks is a falling star when really it's the spaceship containing 626 uh, and asks for a friend, Nani takes her to the dog shelter the next day, hoping a pet will make Lilo less lonely. 626 transforms himself into a dog and is adopted by Lilo who gives him the name Stitch, hence the name of the movie. Yeah. From there, we basically get two storylines. One, Jumba and a one-eyed, noodle-shaped alien named Pleakley, who calls himself an Earth expert, but he's not very knowledgeable at all, because all his Earth research is based on images and a Viewmaster toy. Uh-huh. Um, they're paired up and, dis and unconvincingly disguise themselves as tourists to go after Stitch and capture him to take him back to the Galactic Federation. And then the second and more main story is we see how Leo, Stitch, and Nani become Ohana, or family. Also waiting in the wings is David, a surfer slash fire dancer with a hot spot for Nani. <laughs> Get it? Fire dancer? Hot spot? Ha <laughs> 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 Okay, um, okay, let's start with the good stuff. Actually, there's a lot of good stuff in this movie. First off, I like that they switched gears and did something they haven't done yet. Uh, who else but Disney could come up with the idea of an alien and a little girl becoming friends? Oh, they did that with E.T. Yeah, but that was live action. This is something, that, this is animation. Honestly, I think they do it better in Lilo and Stitch than they do in E.T., but that's just me. Second of all, um, the last couple animated Disney features like Atlanta's have had really extensive colors. Um, Lilo and Stitch went for a more simpler style with, um, with watercolor. Something Disney hadn't done in feature animation for like 60 years since Dumbo. Oh. Um, one interesting thing about the voice cast is they don't use a lot of celebrities. In fact, I think the only celebrity voice actor in this movie is Ving Rhames, who voices Cobra Bobbles. Which is perfect, because he's been in a lot of tough guy movies like Pulp Fiction and the Mission Impossible films. Hmm. Um, everybody else is only familiar if you, you're familiar with certain stuff they've worked on. Uh, Devay Chase, the voice of Lilo, was also the star of the English version of Spirited Away. Stitch is voiced by his creator, one of the writers and directors of the movie, Chris Sanders. 
Um, they got some real Hawaiians to voice Nani and David, Tia Carrere and Jason Scott Lee. Mm -hmm. John was voiced by David Ogden Stiers, who's also voiced Cogsworth in Beauty and the Beast, Radcliffe in Pocahontas, and the Archdeacon in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Bleakley's voiced by Kevin McDonald from Kids in the Hall. The Grand Councilwoman of the Galactic Federation is voiced by an Australian actress, Zoe Caldwell. I have not seen her in anything else besides Lilo and Sketch. And Gantu, our main villain, is voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson, who's well-experienced in voice acting. Mm -hmm. um, I also really like uh, the message. Uh, the message is all about loving your family, which in Hawaiian, ohana is the term for family. It's the message that uh, can carry home with kids and adults, especially if you've lost someone you love a lot. Um, like Lilo's lost her parents, and we've lost family members in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. It's something all of us can learn. So, um, is there anything, um, before I go on to filmmakers and other stuff about this film, what are some of your favorite things about this movie? Mm, I like Lilo and Nani's relationship. I like, even though David's not in the movie that much, I like his, his role. Yep. Uh, David, uh, he helps the family a lot in their times of trouble. Um, he takes them surfing. Of course, that's where we get the famous Song Hawaiian roller coaster ride. And I like that it's not a total lovey dovey relationship. Right, because Nani and David, it's hinted they do love each other and that they used to date, uh, but they have to wait on hanging out together more, uh, because David knows Nani's got a lot on her plate with Lilo, and especially when Stitch comes along. Um, on the filmmaker side of things, this was written and directed by Chris Sanders and Dean DeBlois, who were, had just come off of co-writing Mulan. This was their first time directing something for Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, now they work at DreamWorks Animation, where they did How to Train Your Dragon together. Uh, Chris directed The Croods, and Dean directed the other How to Train Your Dragon films. Disney executive Clark Spencer made his producing debut on Lilo and Stitch, and he's gone on to produce films like Wreck-It Ralph and Zootopia. And the score, the fantastic score of the movie, is done by Alan Silvestri. Uh, you probably remember him from scoring Robert Zemeckis movies like Roger Rabbit and the Back to the Future films. Um, Lilo and Stitch isn't a musical, because di this was the 2000s, and Disney was shying away from musicals at the time. Hence why Emmer's New Groove in Atlantis didn't have a lot of songs. Lilo and Stitch, again, it's not a musical, but they do have a lot more songs than they've had before in the last few years. Um, the music, the soundtrack is largely Elvis music, what with Lilo's fascination of Elvis and all. They've got, like, five or six Elvis songs, including my personal favorite, Hound Dog. Mm -hmm. Plus, in the end credits, they have Elvis's Burn Love and Can't All Fall in Love, performed by Winona and the teen pop group A-Teens. Uh, plus, they've got two original songs, the opening song and Hawaiian Roller Coaster Ride by Alan Silvestri, who did the score, and Mark Kelly E. Hawamalu. Uh, Mark also signed the songs with the uh, Hawaiian Kids Choir, the Kamehameha Kids Choir. Oh. So, I really can't find that much to fault about Lilo and Stitch. Little kids might be a little freaked out by Stitch's destructive behavior, um, but otherwise, I do think this one is worth watching. Yes. So, how did Lilo and Stitch grow as a franchise? Very big, actually. Um, let's see. Not long after Lilo and Stitch came out, it was actually a little more than a year after it first opened in theaters, a direct-to-video sequel, Stitch the Movie, was released in the summer of 2003 as a pilot for the Lilo and Stitch TV series that premiered on ABC Saturday mornings and Disney Channel weekdays about a month later. Stitch the Movie basically sets up the series where we find out that Jumba has smuggled the other 625 experiments to Earth with him. Remember, Stitch is Experiment 626. Right. And the movie basically sets up the series where Lilo and Stitch have to find all the other experiments, turn them from bad to good, and find them places they can belong. I, I, um, we've watched a couple episodes of the series online in the last few years, and we've seen the movie. I actually rewatched it for the first time in years, a couple years ago. Um... The movie's okay, it's obviously not as good as the original, but it's one of Disney's better direct-to-video sequels, and the series that follows um, might be a little Pokemon derivative, but I like it. Yeah, and then they followed with, with the first uh, 
official sequel to the film. Right, after the movie, but before Stitch the movie and the series, Lilo and Stitch 2, Stitch has a glitch, released in the summer of 2005. Uh, Lilo's been helping Stitch maintain his goodness level, um, and they're trying to think of a way to win the Mayday Hula competition, which Lilo's mom won when she was Lilo's age. But there's one problem! Uh, Stitch is glitching out of control because Jumba never got a chance to fully charge him before they were arrested in the first movie. So, uh, Lilo, um, at first thinks Stitch is not cooperating properly, but when she finds out Stitch is in trouble, it's up to her, Nani, Jumba, Pleakley, and David to save Stitch before it's too late. Ooh. Again, Lilo and Stitch 2, um, the, the emotional ending might be too much for little kids, but again, it's one of the better ones. I think I've only seen that one in full once, but I do remember fairly liking it. And then the series ended in the summer of 2006 with the third and final direct-to-DVD movie, Lee Roy and Stitch. All the experiments have been rehabilitated and have homes. Stitch, Jumba, and Pleakley go back to space to take on new jobs, but Jumba's former college pal, Dr. Hamsterville, who's a recurring villain in Stitch the movie and the series, forces Jumba to create an evil version of Stitch called Lee Roy, and then clones him to capture the experiments and take over the planet. And it's up to Lilo Stitch in the experiments to save the day. Um, I think maybe three direct video sequels was maybe a little too much, even if the other sequels were pretty good. But I'm glad they quit while they were ahead. Yeah. Even though the sequels are pretty good. Outside America, Stitch has had a few TV shows in other countries like Japan, but we don't count those as canon because the creators don't. Right. Lilo and Stitch's latest home video release was its two-movie collection Blu-ray release with Lilo and Stitch 2 in the summer of 2013, opposite the Blu-ray two-movie collection debuts of the Ember's New Groove and Atlantis films. Unfortunately, there are no bonus features on the Blu-ray disc, just the two movies. Luckily, the Blu-ray is also a combo pad that includes DVD copies of the movies. For the original Lilo and Stitch, it's, the, it's disc one of the 2009 two-disc Big Wave Edition DVD with bonus features including audio commentary, uh, Disneypedia on the islands of Hawaii, hosted by Lilo and Mani, a create-your-own alien experiment game, hosted by Jumba, some featurettes, music videos, a feature called A Stitch in Time, <laughs> uh, showing Stitch's undocumented history of trying to get into other animated Disney features. Um, a some few of which remain in the trailers. A few games from the Lilo and Stitch Island of Adventures DVD slash board game that they put out to promote the series. And my personal favorite of the bonus features, the Inner Stitchials. Uh, teaser trailers where Stitch gets into other animated Disney features. Namely, the big four of the Disney Renaissance era. The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and The Lion King. Yep. The Aladdin teaser is my favorite. And the Little Mermaid one is really rare. Um... So, so I'm I'm guessing Little Mermaid's your favorite, like yeah. Aladdin's mine. Okay. Um, obviously, uh, it's only one DVD for each film, so they lose disc two, which includes a two-hour-plus documentary on the making of the film and a bunch of deleted scenes. So if you want those, this is the one to pick up. Um, and then, for those of you who are wondering, uh, the Blu-ray combo pack also includes the original 2005 DVD release of Lilo and Stitch 2, Featuring the Hawaiian Roller Coaster Ride music video by Jump 5, a couple of games hosted by Jumba, and a bonus short on the origin of Stitch. Don't we already know this by now? Yes. So that's our thoughts on Lilo and Stitch. I honestly can't say enough about this movie. Without a doubt, minus Pixar films, this is my personal favorite animated Disney feature film from the 2000s decade. And I have to agree. Yep. If you haven't seen Lilo and Stitch, uh, you, you might want to talk to your kids after the movie about uh, the importance of family. And uh, again, they might be a little freaked out by Stitch's shenanigans, but if they can handle stuff like Aladdin and the Little Mermaid, I'm, I think they can handle and will really enjoy Lilo and Stitch. Yep, this one is definitely a keeper. Well, we're out of time for today. So remember, Ohana means family. Family means nobody gets left behind. Or forgotten. And when you wish upon a star, your dreams come true. Goodbye! Bye.